everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Reviews. This is a show where every week I will be reviewing a new major release and then going over basically the positives and the negatives and then giving my overall implication of what I feel the film actually deserves. And again, this is all based on my opinion, and for those of you who are unaware, potential spoilers may be uh, discussed within the show. So without any, uh, without any further ado, let's get started with today's review of the new Seth MacFarlane movie, A Million Ways to Die in the West. So... First off, I got to tell you, this movie, I I was actually, I, I was a little indifferent after watching the movie. I, it was hilarious. It was funny from beginning to end. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, but it it felt as though it was an extended Family Guy episode. So I'll, I'll get into the positives before I start talking about the negatives. But um, yeah, I was laughing from beginning to end. There was a lot of great jokes in the movie. Um Again, it really did feel like a really long Family Guy episode, so if you are a big fan of Family Guy, you will get a good kick out of this movie. It's really funny. Um, I mean, he's Seth MacFarlane's regular voice is pretty much the voice of Brian on Family Guy, so it's almost as though you're watching a human version of Brian just cascading around the, the Old West. Um, the jokes are, just like Family Guy, the jokes are random, but they are ridiculously funny. Um, especially the interplay between a lot of the characters works really well. Um, the, the supporting characters in the movie were, were just awesome. I mean, Giovanni Ribisi, every time he's in a movie, he's just great. He brings everything to every role. He's a great character actor. Um, the standout for me in this movie actually was Charlize Theron. Um, you, she really had a handle on the, on the comedic aspect of the film. She was not opposed to doing things that some other actors or actresses out there may be opposed to doing. Um, which I, I really commended her for that. Uh, she really took some shots at herself, but at other people. And in ways that someone, like when you look at someone like Charlize Theron, you usually see her as a very elegant individual. And watching this movie, you realize she does not see herself as that, at least not in general. She's willing to poke fun at herself, and I really commended her for that. Um, Sarah Silverman also was a highlight of the movie, as she always is. The thing with Sarah Silverman, though, she is an acquired taste. Uh, there are a lot of people who I know who do not like her style of comedy. Um, but the role that she played in this movie was almost tailor-made for her. I almost guarantee that Seth MacFarlane wrote the role with her in mind. Um, or at least had already confirmed that he was going to get her for this role. And the, the fact that she plays a prostitute who is dating a, a man who is very religious. And she basically goes and sleeps with between 10 and 15 guys a day. Yet she wants to, she's saving herself for their wedding night. Um, and so he's even, like the husband is even convinced that Giovanni Ribisi plays her, her, her fiance or boyfriend in the movie. And, um, and so it's, it was just really funny to see that, especially when they're talking uh, about that. She'll come down after, you know, doing her business with somebody else. And then he'll say like, well, why don't we do something like this? Or why don't, why haven't we tried this? And she goes, no, honey, we're saving ourselves for our wedding night. Uh, she's like, we're good, we're good Christians, we're good Catholics, and it's just, I, I, I kept laughing at those scenes, like, they were just absolutely hilarious, um, again, lots of cameos, just like a Family Guy episode, lots of great cameos in the movie, it was just, it was very funny from beginning to end, um, yeah, th those are mainly my positives, I mean, like, the supporting cast, again, you got Liam Neeson in there, you've got, um, as I already said, you've got, uh, Giovanni Ribisi, you got Sarah Silverman, uh, Charlize Theron, you also have Neil Patrick Harris, you have Amanda Seyfried, uh, and actually with one of those, I'm actually going to get into my negatives of the film. So the one thing I felt with the movie was that it was too long. It was almost two hours. Uh, as you're watching it, you the movie doesn't really know what it is. Uh, it basically has two storylines in it, and this isn't really spoiling anything. This is kind of given away in the trailers, but... Um, one of the main storylines in the movie is, of course, Seth MacFarlane's character is a, a farmer who is kind of a coward, and his girlfriend leaves him uh, because, well, mainly because he's a coward, but also because she starts seeing somebody else. And um, and so then he basically comes across Charlize Theron's character, and she decides to try to help him win her back uh, because he has he has uh, challenged her new boyfriend to a duel. And so she had, Charlie Theron basically is there to to help him learn how to shoot and win her back. Um, but then the other storyline in the movie is dealing with this outlaw played by Liam Neeson, and Charlie Theron's character is actually married to that guy, and that is really the 
what the overall storyline is, but it takes a big break, like for a good 40 minutes, you don't even hear anything about it. Um, so, I mean, that to me was a little weird. They needed to tighten that up, I think, a little bit. But again, that's that's just coming from me. Those are things that I noticed. Most people won't really have a problem with it. Um, but the one of the big negatives I had about the film was surprisingly Neil Patrick Harris. Um, with the exception of two scenes uh, in the movie. One of them deals with his mustache, and another one deals with... Um, uh, well, I'm not even going to spoil what that one is. That, you guys will have to experience that for yourself. It, it's really funny. At least I found it was funny. It's a little juvenile, but it's really funny. Um, but most of his comedy felt forced. He, like, I, especially in the theater I was in, I wasn't really laughing all that much with his character. Not a lot of other people in the theater were. And the theater was pretty well packed. There, it was, I'd say, about 70% full. And not a lot of people were laughing in a lot of his sequences, except for those two that I mentioned, or one that I mentioned and one that I hinted at. But, um, I don't know, I... Uh, a lot of the jokes were used in the trailers as well. A lot of the big laugh out loud sequences in the movie were featured in the trailers um, because they did. Ha they had a red band trailer and they also had the green band trailer. For those of you who don't know what I mean when I say red band, whenever you see a trailer come up and it's got that green logo that says this trailer's been approved for all audiences, that's a green band trailer. That means it's been approved for everyone to watch. There's nothing in the trailer that's going to be um, you know, any swearing or nudity or extensive violence or anything of that sort. Then you have a red band trailer, which does the same thing, but at the beginning it says this trailer has been restricted to mature audiences. And so they include swearing, they include blood, they include uh, gore, they include nudity usually. Um, and so with having the red band trailers and the green band trailers for this movie, they really did give away a lot of the jokes. So if you have seen a, a few of the trailers, you've seen a lot of the jokes. But they're still really funny when you watch them in the movie, when you see them in context. Uh, so the, it still did work, but I did notice that a lot of them were used in the trailers. Um, and it's unfortunately just not as memorable as Ted, which was his previous directorial movie that he did. Um, I believe it was two years ago that that movie came out. And uh, he's got Ted 2 that is supposedly coming out next summer, uh, as long as that's still on track. Uh, but overall, it's a really funny movie. Again, if you're a fan of Family Guy, you're really going to enjoy the film. Um, overall, the overall score I gave it was about a 7.5 out of 10. Because I feel there was a lot of room for it to improve upon itself. Seth MacFarlane, unfortunately, he's just not... He's not that engaging of an actor. He basically is just playing himself. And that's one of the juxtapositions about the film as well. Even though it's set in the Old West, everybody talks and acts as though it's now, as though we're in modern times, which I felt that was a positive about the movie. It, it, they weren't trying to emulate a, a Western, which I really appreciate. I thought that was actually that added to the humor, um, especially considering the fact that he spends, like Seth MacFarlane's character spends mostly the, the entire film um, just tearing down the Old West about saying how horrible and horrendous it is. Um... So, I mean, overall, I, I really did find that it was, uh, overall, a really funny movie. Uh, I don't think people are going to remember as much from it as they did from things like Ted. Uh, but uh, one of the cameos in the movie, holy God, it you're almost going to cry when you watch it. It is so funny. Uh, I think one of the TV spots have actually ruined the 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 cameo so if you have seen them it's unfortunate but I hadn't seen it I didn't know that this was coming up in the movie and when it came out everyone in the theater was almost falling out of their seats laughing like there are there are moments of this movie that make you do that and you really have to commend someone like Seth MacFarlane to be able to provide something like that after 12 seasons of Family Guy and a feature film under his belt already to still have ingenious ways of introducing us to pop culture and still being able to to stick those elements into the movie so i really like that um so overall I, I did enjoy the movie there were some negatives with it that could have been taken out i'm intrigued to see what kind of deleted scenes there are because there are some sequences in the trailer that are not in the movie uh one of them i i have found was one of the funniest parts of the trailer and they didn't include that in the final film so it was unfortunate but the, <laughs> the, the all the back and forth with his parents is <laughs> Is when you watch, you'll understand. It's really funny. Like there's there's a lot of good parts about it, but um, but yeah, it's about seven and a half out of ten. If I go and see it again, I may change my mind on that. Like I did, um, I did change my mind on uh, X Men: Days of Future Past. I've seen that now three times in theaters. And the one thing that I said was a negative about the film was Peter Dinklage. And after watching the movie a couple of times, I've decided to go back on that. Because at, at first viewing, I expected a little bit more. It was just my ex expectations about his character. And they didn't live up to them. But 
understanding what his character meant to the overall storyline, I I really did appreciate his role and his character in the movie. The only thing about that I would say about the film that would still be a negative for X Men would be he was still his motivations were not made clear as to why he felt this way, or at least not clear enough. There was no actual reasoning behind why he uh, why he was that way. And in an interview, Brian Singer actually stated that um, they cast him. Uh, one of the reasons why they did uh, specifically uh, seek out getting someone like it, uh, Peter Dinklage's stature, uh, no pun intended, was because of the fact that he is, even though he's still a human, he is kind of a mutant, like he's a dwarf, and, and looking at dwarfism as being uh, something that's unique to only a select number of people, very similar to how the mutation and mutants in the X-Men universe, uh, cinematic universe, are, about how they are a very small group of people, and him going after them, that was one of the main reasons why they wanted him in the role, and yet that was never hinted at once in the film. Uh, mainly it was to to alleviate some worries that people would have had about saying they're gonna they're gonna make fun of him that he's a dwarf or they're gonna they're gonna make that stand out and gladly they didn't but unfortunately it did go against what his motivations were but I I still went back on that I do feel that he his character was right for the film so with this movie if I go and see it again I may see Neil Patrick Harris's character a little bit better again it was my anticipation of seeing him in a role like this in a movie like this you know he he runs the mustachery. Uh, and he's got the gigantic curved mustache, and oh, it's it's great. It, it like the background of his character is great. Just the execution of his character, I found, was just lack uh, lackluster. But overall, I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. If you guys feel any differently, please let me know in the comments section. Um, because I again, I had really high hopes for this. It, it lived up to it for the most part, but there were still a few things that I would have liked to have seen different. Um, but yeah. So that's my overall review for uh, for in a uh, million ways to die in the West. Check back here next week, guys, for my review of Edge of Tomorrow, the new Tom Cruise movie. And for those of you who don't know, this movie has been tracking really well. I believe it's still holding a, a mid-90 percentage in Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes, which means that the majority of critics out there really do like it. Um, so I, I'm in really anticipating that. Uh, and also, don't forget to check back later on today for my... A weekly episode of Movie News with Nicholson. But for now, this has been Coming Soon Reviews. You guys have been great. Thank you so much for watching, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.